Hey guys, this is part 3 and we'll be finishing off this Nikiti. Now in part 2 of this series, the blade was etched because the order I had to do everything in. In each episode, I wanted to dedicate to a certain area of the knife build, so just ignore it not being etched at the moment, because we're mainly focusing on the handle. But you'll see how it all comes together in the end. I'm starting off with a block of mammoth ivory and it's a pretty funky shape. I can't make it into a square block because I'll be taking too much material off. So I ended up using my archometers and guess where most of the material is? Making it incredibly accurate. To the centimeter. Say for Americans that's within 3 eighths of an inch. So it's pretty damn close. Then I marked a reference line and got it ready for drilling. So this knife has a takedown construction so I'm drilling all the way through and at the back of the handle I'll then go on with a slightly bigger drill bit and drill maybe one third the depth down, but it really depends on where your thread starts. I then make a female insert to go on the back for the finial to screw into, just to cinch everything down. All I'm doing right now is just getting the handle round and symmetrical for the carbon bit. I'm going to be doing some carving on the handle which I've only done one other time in my life. And I'll be using a jig usually made for marking out fluted handles. But I'm not making a fluted handle. Well actually kind of. But it helped me mark out lines to do what I want to do next. Almost what I want to do next. Um, meth. Not meth, math. Actually mentioning that, have you guys seen the show Moral Oral because it just reminded me of it. With this jig it allows you to make a grid in your handle which you can draw a line connecting to the diagonals. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now I've got this bolster actually tapered. Just tape it in line with the handle, just for aesthetics because it looks better. Rather than having that tapered, get to the bolster and have that square or just um, parallel. Because that looks a little bit clunky, or not clunky, but it looks kinky. So now I just need to acetone this, get this ready for the etch. Because now the blade's practically done. I can coffee etch this and that may take a few times to get it right. But while that coffee etches, I can work on the handle and then just focus on that. I've got some platinum wire which I'm going to dome over the end with an engraver. I then cut them to size making them look like rivets to inlay in the ivory. I'm creating an heirloom fit on the handle which means you make your handle larger than the bolster and then round the edge over to meet that bolster. We'll space it in my case. This allows the material to expand and contract through the climate without creating any sharp edges or unwanted steps. I do this on everything whether the material is stabilised or not because there's always a little bit of movement in natural materials. I always see people showing the knives can cut by doing the paper test, but that doesn't really tell you much other than proving that your knife is sharp. It doesn't show you how well it performs for its purpose. For instance, I have here two vegetables and one alleged fruit, a carrot, a tomato and a potato. I use these foods to test three different aspects of knife function, edge geometry, sharpness and food release. 
If you have bad edge geometry, for instance your edge is thick, when you cut a carrot it will crack rather than slice and it becomes really easy to tell whether your edge is good or not. Now sharpness. The tomato skin can prove to be hard to cut with a blunt knife and tends to crush onto its cell. And finally potatoes. Because the texture and how wet a potato is, it can stick to a knife worse than most fruits and vegetables. Having a knife with a lot of surface area that is flat can make it worse, but if you have, say, a Damascus pattern with a convex or concave uh, surface, that would help into getting better food release. If you guys enjoyed the video, please subscribe and tell me what you guys think of the knife. There was a lot of firsts for me and there's still a lot I can improve on, but overall I'm pretty happy with how it came out. For my next video, I will do a Brute to Forge cookery, so stay tuned because that will come up sometime in the future. Anyways, have a great day guys and thank you for watching.